the Census Foundation for generously funding this program for the past number of years. Thank you also to Lori McPhee, the Associate Director of the Arts Research Center for her essential work in organizing all of the fellows, all of the years, all of the time. Um, really grateful to you, Lori. We're also grateful for the administrative assistance from um, Amanda Tachin uh, from um, Arizona. We thank you all for joining us here. Finally, I have tremendous gratitude for the opportunity to learn from and share space with the wonderful poetry fellows, the wonderful poetry fellows, and especially with my co-facilitators, Natalie Diaz and Amanda Tachin. I now invite Natalie to say a few words um, as we begin. For her essential work I'm in hearing organizing two things, but I'm, all of am the I the photos, only one hearing two all things? Of the years, all of the time. Yeah. Um, okay. Really grateful um, to you, Lori. We're also grateful well, to gracias, you. Well, uh, gracias. It's been really lucky um, to be um, alongside Tachin, you all. Um, Amanda uh, and I um, are Arizona. at a Arizona State uh, uh, University, Dr. Amanda Ticine, um, part of the Center for Imagination in the Borderlands. And thinking of our oceans, our ocean, ancient oceans, and this frame and of um, or invitation of reclamation and that and Beth and, and Craig and Lori offered us in the beginning. Um, it words, was lucky to be um, here and begin. think um, think about reclamation not only as uh, being rooted in what what or has been lost or what has been I'm greatly changed, um, years, but like most importantly, thinking really of it toward um, um, the abundance we can and build uh, from those experiences. So alongside you um, all, um, and how we can recognize those abundances. Are at eight, Arizona in, State, uh, University yeah, I'm hearing that too. Um, part of I don't know if that's me or not but I think that's better, yeah? Yeah, okay, that was like an experimental poetry exercise. But um, so it, it just, again, it's been lucky to be alongside you all and um, for Lori and Beth to have opened up this space to us alongside your fellows um, and for Amanda Ticine and I uh, from the Center for Imagination of the Borderlands to join alongside you all. Um, and thinking about ocean, ancient oceans, uh, thinking about uh, reclamation, um, not as just being what we've lost, but uh, I think most importantly about what, what we also find and build abundance through and from. Um, one of the things, uh, the lenses that we looked through, of course, thinking of ocean, ancient ocean, was the lens and practices of water, of our waters. Um, and, you know, our waters first had native or indigenous names before they became um, these places of extraction. Um, you know, water, of course, has a memory. Um, we, you know, we've been thinking about it in that way. It's memory, it's it's power, uh, it's wildness, it, it's force um, to, to give or take life. Um, thinking of it as ceremony. Uh, the way the way we can use it to cleanse, to pray, or to play even, um, and also what it helps us carry or what it teaches us to carry of what is sweet or what is heavy uh, in the world and in our lives. And so, um, before we we explain the the run of the show, I I wanted to offer a question for you all who are alongside us um, and who are alongside the poets with us tonight to think about. One of our first questions um, that we asked together was. Uh, thinking through water, where where in our bodies do we carry our waters? And so the question we'd like you to hold tonight as you listen to our poets read is, uh, where in your body do you carry poetry? And so that might just be a, a being tiny bit aware of like, you know, when you feel something, uh, we, we say when you feel the heat in the poem, but when you feel something from one of the poems, where do you feel it um, in your body or uh, where do you feel like, you know, where are you experiencing it? Um, and so we'll, at the end of this, um, uh, our 13 poets will read, they'll each read and ha one will hand off to the other. Um, and then after that, we'll repose that question to each of our poets and they'll answer it with you and, and hopefully you'll be thinking about it um, with them throughout the reading. But um, 
yeah, otherwise, gracias, you know, all of you for coming together. Um, you know, we always say poetry doesn't just happen on the page. This is this is actually where the poetry happens uh, far before and far after the poems themselves, usually. So, um, yeah, gracias for being here with us. And I will turn it over to our first reader. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Natalie. So, skuk hudnyek vusamwi. Cody James uh, Good evening to you all. My name is Cody James White Eagleation. Um, I was very fortunate to be the, uh, picked as a community fellow from Arizona. I'm from the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community, and I just recently graduated ASU this last year. Um, today, I'll be reading my poem titled Self Portrait with the Desert. I hope you all enjoy it, and I will be sharing my screen now. Give me one second. All right, and before I read, can everyone see? Quick thumbs up. All right, cool. My poem titled, Self-Portrait with the Desert. I stand in tandem to tan Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountains of these desert. My skin painted to the tinges of earth by spines of cactus, prick and pricking. My skeleton cut and bended by willow, thatched by arrowweed, protected by clay. A river who is dying to run, to catch millions of heavy mouths to quench. The dried riverbeds run deep through my veins, keeping my skeleton strong. There is simply not enough skeleton for everyone. I'm walking valleys of cold steel and blood, garnished with river designs to show us their respect. Easy to dam and claim, laying bare the skeletons of our hoogum. Build, 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 faster, faster, and faster. O oh, desert of me and you, I see blindness in face of them. My paint, offensive and loud, even in screeching sounds of imperfect metal, making and breaking promises while cheering to a written land acknowledgement. We will have to speak again to remind them of our importance. Water will die, and it will be I who crumbles into ash. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoy my poem. Um, I wish I had a little bit more time, but got to keep it rolling. So with that, I'd like to say thank you again for everyone. And now I'm going to pass it over to my fellow um, my fellow uh, poet, uh, Julian. So take it away, Julian. Hey, Julian. Hey, all you sweet people, catch you out, y'all. Thank you for being here today. My name is Julian, and I am part of Lukuksime In Was Nimipu. I am Nez Perce. Today, I will be reading two poems. The first one is calling us back, our people back, our pain back, our land back, ceremony back, and language back. The second poem is for our ancestors, taking back our hope, joy, and native humor. There's a few jokes in there too. You'll know when I say, hey, again, catsy out, yeah. We all native rappers now, a new world order. This is how it starts. This is where the tit -wa tit begins. Now it's your turn to shut up, sit down, and tell your friends. Yo, first let me hit you with some iambic pentameter. Look for me in your past, present, and future parameter. Here you are past tense. Let me cut you down in your prime. To all my tea token, we are bringing you a Nimipu spit. Low key, but prime time. Today, you're in my hood. I see you repping out here on my block, cousin. Compared to my people, Time immemorial, you ain't shit, youngin. To meet Nisa Inwas Kus, remember that I am water. To meet Nisa Inwas Kus, remember that I am water. Tin cups, moccasins, men yet boys ready for the slaughter. Let's look at this narrative one more time, put the past in review. This isn't John Wayne's War Wagon or How the West Was Won but a scary movie with Pinhead, Hellraiser, guess who? 
Yes, we're beefing. Your books call us gods, but where's the myth? No, this is just an Indian love story like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Indian extermination acts, measles, using germ warfare, sickly, missing and murdered indigenous people, lateral violence, a fody, black eye, and a hickey. Back robes, no gas, res rides, beer bottle, pass me that iced Mickey's. Federal law, the bones of children in residential schools where save the man and kill the Indian gets sticky. With this knowledge, you don't know what you, who you're messing with. As Sherman Alexi says, poof, poof, alliteration. There isn't free verse or home of the free. It's the other parallelisms, antithetical ones, that make this determination. To meet Nissa, in was Allah. Remember that I am fire. To meet Nissa, in was Allah. Remember that I am fire. Stolen lands, women's daughters, non-treaty require. Now that I have become death, a gun, peace between our worlds, supplier. If you didn't know, let me teach you a lesson. U.S. history is wrong, an absolute liar. Respect is superfluous when it comes to the United States of America, blood quantum and body count. Rules, regulations, laws, segregation, too much tyranny in any amount. Our mothers, sisters, aunties, reservations, water, flour, and fry bread bring famine to our people, served us up diabetes to every Indian, now off with his head. Doctors, dentists, statesmen, underserved communities, healthcare, drugs, poverty, and Indian heads in jars. Cigarette packs, quarter bloods, dimes and nickels, butter brands, mascots, and the way of water avatars. <laughs> the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, the real history of Thanksgiving. 1492, Columbus began his genocide offshore. Kona, Tilakaitza, Enim Titokin. There, my people go to war. Kona, Tilakaitza, Enim Titokin. There, my people go to war. With the forces that use gender dominance to settle the score, alliance give us exterm examinations of how serving the family, of how severing the family serve the goal of colonial-based violence. Strategies target women, two-spirit and children, denial and silence. And since we all native rappers now, we don't need Indian bones in the fucking Smithsonian non-compliance. Heteropatriarchy disciplines individualizes community, communally indigenous women's rights to control their own bodies and lives by empire. To meet Nisa Alaki, I know. Remember, I will arrive by fire. To meet Nisa Alaki, I know. Remember, I will arrive by fire. Endorsing the misconceptions of male superiority, ownership and control of your daughter, implying erasure is legitimate so non-natives can make rightful claims to our lands, disappearing and no one saw her. But as Toni Morrison notes, those narratives are largely told by the victors of war, presenting a version of truth or reality as if it's all white male life. Shakespeare or Geoffrey Chaucer. I hope you take this personally because then your emotions get the best of you. In blood drenched the patriarchy, Republicans, democracy, here is another master narrative speaking. To meet Nissa Kuski Pino, remember I will arrive by water. To meet Nissa Kuski Pino, remember I will arrive by water. My next poem, Pacific Northwest Itziaya travels to New Mexico, a titwatit -tit connecting place to language, identity, ha, pop, culture. Waco titwatisa knocks. Now I'm going to tell a story. It's a known fact. Coyotes are often mistaken for dogs just like my dad. Nay, 
coyotes in some parts of the country are considered to be medium-sized wild dogs found in the arid regions of North America. Today, a total of 19 subspecies span the continent of neighboring Canada and Central America. Picoon hiwaletsena ka kona tusti. Your volume, Julia. Your volume's off. Yep. Julia, and your mic is off. Julian, your mic, your mic. His very own love song. As this land, it's, it's full of the legends of his travels. His fame runs great and deep, traveling the lands from the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean to the Great Plains, Buffalo country. But it's Yaya was lonely. Naksweepa. Itziaya. One morning, Itziaya decided to travel downriver. He traveled past Witmipinama Animal Council, past Heyukts, Hatswa, Ka Pakach Pakach, Cottontail Boy and Baby Rattlesnake, past Katsayinomiats, Sleeping Chief, past Patukis Ayet Wechwet, and Ficklemus Frog. Indeed, he was not much bigger than a small dog. Just like my dad. Hey, his coat was a shaggy, dusty, sukoi, sukoi, brown, reflective, chai, chai, white, puch, puch, gray, and simuch, simuch, black. His ears were sharp and pointed, eyes bright and sensitive. Itziaya was traveling to a place in the desert for a powwow. There, powwalanawat, one who makes indecent proposals. Tea, just like my dad, hey, would find a wife and quench his thirst. When he got there, he looked Lukit's Kinike south and saw her, his soon-to-be wife. She was tall, sleek, ka beautiful, feathers, ka pony beads adorned her body, the crest of her long neck. When she danced, it was like a supplice. But every time Itziaya tried to talk to her, she sped away. Itziaya tried to run after her, but alas, she was too fast. Some say she never stopped running, and neither did Itziaya. To this day, you can see Itziayan relentless pursuit, running after his soon-to-be wife, Roadrunner. There are some who say Itziaya became an artist, got into silent films, Ka changed his name to Wiley. But that's just rumors on my res. Nay, yo, hello. That is all. For our next Poetry in the Census fellow, reading tonight is Al Ann Katsiao Yao. Thank you, Julia. Um, I'll introduce myself uh, just by saying that I'm a visual artist. And I'm going to read a very short, a short section from a longer piece of writing. Um, if any of my students are listening, please don't follow this advice. I'm conflicted. Business or art. I could never commit to that Warholi and Sutra. Making money is art and working is art and good business is the best art, said Andy. I'm torn between the pressure, compulsion, the pathology, though passion is the artistic euphemism, to work, 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 to create the next artwork, write the next chapter, to promote both, to be visible, to produce, succeed, to not be a failure, to make my mark, leave a legacy, or to go slow, not participate, to disappoint, to be a killjoy, feminist and otherwise, a curmudgeon, to cause trouble, Loosen the bolts of the machine to not go gentle into new days, to grow old disgracefully. The art critic, Jerry Saltz, with whom I'm online meta-friends, or whatever the term is, 
though not to be confused with meta friend, one word, meaning a, a close platonic relationship between asexuals. Jerry suggests the following. I quote. It froze, I think. If they're frozen, they might not get them. Yeah. Okay, he's probably popping back on, so. We can just ask them to restart when they arrive. Or should we go to our next poet and then um, come back to Alan? Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, and that's uh, Eileen uh, is, yeah. Okay. Lori, do you need, do you want to say, I see your little hand raised, but if not, I can go ahead. Um, Pia Lee, Najime, Notoka, Eileen Sulema Dominguez, Tlaskamati. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Aileen Sulema Dominguez. Thank you so much for being here and hearing us. Um, I am Nawa from my mother's side um, and really grateful to be in this space. And I'll be reading a short poem called Floodwaters. I grew asthma in the womb because even then I wanted closeness. I wanted your heart to seep into me. Instead, I choked on blood and bile and water. It entered my lungs the way a child throws a rock across the pond, wanting it to skip, and it sinks. It happens when a baby is stressed, a gasp, a gulp. My first dialogue with desire, my first interface with longing, left me lamentable lungs and a measly body that associated love with submersion. This engulfed body has no room for grudges, I promise. Contrary to poetic tendency, I don't have my grievances numbered and listed. I just have this inland sea. Yearning freezes it over each season, and the marine life below are preserved in numbness. Our homelands and lineages were introduced to the invasive species of brutality and conquest, handed to us so that we may do the work of destroying ourselves for those who envision a horizon without us. That is why tomorrow already feels underwater. I hope that I might find you in the flood. Thank you all so much. Um, I don't know if Alan is back, but if not, I believe Ines is up next. That's Kulawit Oikalo. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here with all of you. Um, Ketchiel, you to Natalie and to Beth for having us with them all this fall. Um, my poem is called Song for Palestine, a call for ceasefire, justice, and peace. How graceful can words be in a time of intentional slaughter? When women and children are being murdered by the thousands, what image do I conjure? the manana and child like Picasso's Guernica, or the wounded earth embracing the fallen, reverberating with the suffering, receiving the shed blood and each drop the living memory of a people in struggle. All life is witness. Unrelenting siege. This is not war. This is murder, Chomsky says. This is not about sides. This is about genocide. Uncle taught me the Nipi people have songs for soldiers going into battle, into war. 
personal protection songs named for the individual soldier. A protection song cannot always triumph over death, but a protection song is held in the heart's embrace of the soldier and in the hearts of the people who sing for them, voices gently holding the soldier in the moment of transition should death come. Tenderly, the song nurtures the soldier prayerfully to know they're not alone, to know their path is lit, to know the ancestors will find them to bring them home. But in Gaza, civilians are dying in escalated horror. Where are the protection songs for the thousands? For babies, children, women, men, elders, teachers, spiritual leaders, for the people, the earth, the waters, the natural world. If we believe that songs have power, songs travel, can be heard felt from any corner of the world, we must sing. If we believe that songs take us to be with those for whom we're singing, for them to be protected, we must sing. If we believe that songs are medicine, connecting heartstrings, memory beads, all times, places, and spaces, even beyond death, we must sing. I'm singing. I will keep singing for Palestine. Don't ever give up, Palestine. Don't ever give up. I'm singing. I will keep singing for Palestine. Freedom, 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 Palestine. When up to Yawam, Palestine, when up to Yawa, Palestine, what mighty mama of one of Palestine, what mighty mama of one of Palestine, I wanna weep, I wanna weep, Palestine, I wanna weep, I wanna weep, Palestine, when that. They are Palestine. When I they are Palestine, wet mad in my mind, I want to Palestine. Wet mad in my mind, I want to Palestine. When I they are Palestine. When I they are Palestine. I want to be Palestine. I want to be. I want to be. I want to be. Palestine, and I'd like to introduce the next wonderful poet, Chris Hosnick. Oh, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Chris. I'm um, here in Arizona. I'm honored to be here tonight, um, and I'm going to share, um, try to attempt to share two poems. Um, here's the first one. Uh, this one's titled, uh, in the Badlands. Somewhere in the husks I found you, fingers cradling cans of pears, a serpent and baked alma ata, tally red, yellow, green, yellow pears, red again. Red was the color of it, wasn't it? As lost in wheat field plains, dust covered wounds, pos positioning harm. Dainty cross daily over a stove, my mother tends to these, our millennium's greatest survival kit. Here in the badlands where psychosis is a break even, a wage, a warrior panhandling along the 66, outside the gas stations where parsnip as dandelions on wheels shear the sheep of their mounds. The dwelling, that's what you called it, didn't you? The dwelling. When the music escapes and enters the body, it slits the tongue like a fruit fly, like Judas. Now here, the husks burn, taxing and spreading across nation, from the bellies of nation, churn in aorta, around the mesas, a stampede of flowers grunting and rising. Now you're so far away, somewhere in the basin going towards the cascadas. Drink, motto, drink, eat. You are here with the Cascades, conservation. I may drink once, drink twice, hail a taxi three times before I see you again. Until then, I join sensation. I join this harmony. Build my garden, scorch it, ready it for rebirth, blood in the badlands, bleed for a new pair. 
All right, and here's uh, my second piece um, titled This New Americana. They will tell you not to water the juniper tree, poison in your carroso, your asterion, they say, berries nicked between teeth. Freedom, they mean. Freedom is ink, but never wheat. Freedom evaporates, flowers and the reeds, myths, drown pain, pleasure, hurt, but never controls the floods. We once used its ashes with cornmeal and great and grit and gravel, or we mine it, welcome it back to the lakes and playas. It will be lost on you, they say, the ashes and the berries from the same tree. One a body, the other a gamble, a snake bite. Freedom is extracted from judgment. The judgment is wisdom, it is trial, it is error. Freedom takes myth as mortar, as stories, as parties, as marriage. It will be your reservoir. And yet you will ache for an ancient ritual from this possession. As the needles go from green to red, you will learn to you will learn you don't exist at Essex or MGM. You are Cronus's child. This distance between what was and Bosque Redondo or Almawasi. The walk will never be as quiet as the war. A war, you will learn, comes from weir, from where, from weru, from wares, confusion. Why are we caught between the walk and the confusion, you will ask, as the storms come? Stay sheltered under the juniper. Turn the wood and leaves to medicine. Your soul safe from erosion. Taste its confection. But in the, their vessel, vessel is a clot. A born, weave it into your spine, secure it, cradle it. This new body is the flood they are afraid of. It is not the juniper they are after. This new kin, you and your assailant, keep the blood pumping, drown it, slice it, and puncture it. Root rot, water the juniper into this new Americana. All right, thank you so much. And I will pass this on to Fede. All right. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, my name is Fede. I'm an undergrad at Berkeley. I study bio. And today I'll be reading two poems um, that I wrote recently and that I believe are thematically similar. The first one is called Host. His mouth is a church and mine is a shadow, a yearning well. I kneel before the mouth of a hungry God beside myself. My body is a prayer, a chalice in his hand. His breath is a hymn sung by his tongue, which rises to the ribbed vault, arching into the crucifix of every word I wish to embody. I'm consumed by the host I'm given to take. I know I am blessed to be part of him. I know, I know I am not to twist fate, not to steal the stars for myself, spike myself with desire, and for the first time, wish to be entered instead. Drink me right. Thank you. And my second poem is called Our Flag, is a tablecloth. One, as a kid, I wanted to be a weapon. I was an open mouth, a beckoning. I wanted to wield myself. I wanted to become a blade. I wanted to eat hunger. I, I wanted too much. I, I was a needle. I was a wound. I, the last time I killed a fly, I laid it on my pillow and I bent myself around it. We slept that night. Two, will we survive ourselves? Let's wash the flag, bring it down to the river, soothe it with stone, watch it wash, let us unravel into thread, sheath the country, bend like a current, bend like a vein, Bend like a branch, heavy with ripe, sowing sun into the earth. Let's braid ourselves together. Lick my eye if something gets stuck. I'll bloom to you. 
Let's wash our flag. We can catch the stars in the water. All right, thank you. And with that, I'll pass it on to Marisa. Thank you, Fede. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Marisa Lin. I am a graduate student at UC Berkeley. Um, so last winter, I found a photograph in my parents' basement that completely changed the way I looked at my father. Um, he's generally a quiet, reserved man. He tells me a lot to not get involved in politics or political protests, um, but this photo showed him marching at a demonstration um, where um, um, in Arizona, um, actually, when he was an gra international graduate student um, at ASU. Um, and this demonstration was a protest in response to the Chinese government's violent military crackdown um, of peaceful pro-democracy student protesters on June 4th, 1989. Um, and they were demonstrating in Tiananmen Square. Um, thousands of civilians were killed and injured as a result of this, but to this day, there are no official statistics um, of how many died that day. And this event, um, which happened just over three decades ago, is not widely known or recognized among um, the Chinese public. So, um, yeah, and this photo led me to look at other photos from the Tiananmen Square protests in an effort to remember. Um, and those photos inspired this poem, which I'm going to read tonight. Um, a language note um, before I begin is that Tiananmen um, roughly translates into Gate of Heavenly Peace. Tiananmen Square, 1989. There are stars in their caps, soldiers crouched as if the revolution only walks at knee level. Before them, a sea of students, one adjusting his glasses, his face turned towards some invisible turmoil, this refusal that could bring everything tomorrow or simply life or simply bullets slicing the square shout and fears running and running into bodies that ripple onto concrete like children napping under Beijing sun eyelids still as peace still as red pooling as ink resisting its meaning resisting the fist of a government crushing ambitions into pennies while a single protester white shirt tucked in like my father wears to church stands before a tank the way one stands before God where it moves he moves where he stands it stops Man and machine dancing, carrier bag swinging from his left hand, the other one raised as if he were hailing a cab, having just purchased books for the semester, a pack of calligraphy paper, and an album by John Denver, who my immigrant father first heard in China in 1979, Denver's twang blaring across campus in the halls on the streets, ringing through every child's freedom dream, so almost heaven, that my father 
upon hearing the news, eats his oatmeal in silence, watches the spoons, craters disappear into mush, and the clouds that float over Arizona desert, how they divide light from the road. Thank you. So now I'm going to hand it over to Christina. Thank you so much, Marisa. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Christina Mendez, and I'll be sharing two poems today. Um, they may seem completely unrelated, but they speak to my heart and to the world um, in this moment. So the first one is called En la Mesa con las Tías. Arriving, I stumble searching for you in that hazy light that lilts and wafts down from the plastic skylight etched into the roof onto the curved table. I reach out to hold you only to brush up against dust dancing down onto the table. I trace my finger on the raised edges of the grain as they flash across my memories. Remembering, I see hands amasando maseca, sal, agua tibia into a plastic bowl too plain to be so sacred. And hands, those hands, curved fingernails, long, plump fingers, and wrinkles threatening to break ground there. Hands, amasando so gently and firmly, maseca burrowing into each crevice along your fingernails while you conjure an alchemy of love and contentment. Hands, that I know better, handing me a plate, a bowl, an offering, than I know their touch. Feeling, it rests on that horizon, the yellow round table pushed up against white walls. It rests there, sedimented over and over, crumbs of pan dulce, the brown sugar of churros, coffee rings left after chisme y chispes, told and told and told. It rests there. I trace those grains that squiggle and circle on the wooden table and gingerly catch the sunlight in my hand, hoping that it's really you. Close my eyes and hear your laughter, sometimes quiet, hidden behind a quivering hand and shoulders that trace the octaves in place of your crackling laughter. Sometimes loud, spilling and rising from a mouth wide open, hands flailing and flapping the table, that sacred place. Hope and love and grief. Yes, every memory of your name, it rests there. The second poem is currently untitled, but is dedicated to Palestine. I wake to you through bright sunlight or gray skies, blurry and still. I wake to you, to news of you, to your voice calling out and to those 25,000 tons of bombs that light up and light up and light up your skies and the suffocating dust that buries your mourning, and the darkness that envelops all of you, this silence. They do not hear you, do not see you, won't hold your voiceless voice, ragged, enraged, grief and pleas, asking to live. I wanted to look away, to close my eyes, scream and cry and feel hopeless, hopeless knowing, Hearts have been corroded to even think to justify these deaths as just. You plead, telling them to focus on the children, 8,000 children, and I can't block out their aunties, those holy hands that hold and guide you. Your friend who is sitting by the school and your cousin who was sick with worry over his aging parents, and your lover who had been your confidant and happiness for 20 years, and they're saying they're using more humane bombs. Humane, 
meaning showing or having compassion or kindness. Through rubble, ash, smoke, compassionate craters and scars dotting every mile of your land, strewn and tattered Gaza, barely breathing Gaza. Land and air and all jagged languished breaths taking in kindness in soot and smoke. And your screams, your cries, grief welling up and the joy of reuniting after torture and shock and I sit in bright buildings and normalcy, only wanting to cry when I face you again, scrolling here with a cup of coffee, complaining of the cold, while you flee, kicking dust and ash and relatives into the air with every desperate step as you run out of space to run. And here they disown you, Build a barrier to shut out your hearts and sorrow, saying, it is their right. But I sit here and reach out to hold you, to brush the soot from your cheeks, to hold the mourners with you and reclaim this grief as ours, these murders as ours, this future as ours, until only sunlight is reflected in your eyes and your skies are only lit by hazy starlight and still clouds, and your voice rings with lightness and liberation. Until then, until then, I wake with you. Thank you. I'll pass it off to um, Angel. Angel Saboda Katala Lilt. Uh, and my uh, my piece, I didn't know where I was going to go with it and that I was going to end up here with it. Um, I did a piece earlier last year, a year before, about my mom. And this is kind of about me and my dad, as it turns out. <laughs> um, in Nimipu, I'm from... Uh, Nimipu, the people, Lapua, Idaho, and part of Luke Upsime. Kotsiyapya. Wutsasa, Becoming, by Angel Sabota, Tala Little Sunset. Hope lol, Mimka, Smok, Smok, Hakus, Pak, Pak, Hata, Au, Hutsayo, Sach, Nimpa, Kaanza, Wenept. Season around October when tamarack needles fall, orange, yellow, green, light brown, precious became in the fall honor song. Hata'au piskuna hu hupza akamkini kai kenech. Oi lok kolika puch nina, sopla si tu leh netza ki yauki. Kau, kau, kau. Precious. Leaves falling from heaven above, wrapped in shawl, whirlwinds descending slowly. Grace, grace, grace. Tene nak lamp lamp il pilp yos yos tijila al nahpaiksa il illa paikna hul hataau. Sunset pink, red, blue, purple carrying the beam of light, silent entrance of precious. Hata'au hai hai kot kot hiti ka leh netza ipalikpa piti ka hoksa il scout watas. Precious white plumes floating in clouds connecting vault of heaven to earth. Hin ka mi ap kawat hi wiza. Hasen hasen ki wakis wut ki timina pim 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 he kiu kiu will it sa kuts kuts ipsus it's a pak it's a pak pap sa tiska away uh atem ka ya 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 he pach ham sa dear baby crying with breath of life heart sound of small drum drumming Tiny hands making fists, 
chubby legs, arms flying in air, powwow dancing. And so this, this whole writing, I kind of broke it into two. So this part is titled, To Meet Nasa, Walk Iswasa, Pouring Out Heart, Remembering, Living. Now this time I'm just gonna do the uh, red and the black, just the direct translation. <clears throat> Dear child growing, <clears throat> Oh, okay. Hatta o me up kawat he pip he pimsa hip nimsa. He he sakatsa tusti nech the litpa climbing tree very high in the sky. He yo sitski. Oh, how wonderful. Wat met sit the lah natsak. Don't look down. Wat met sit the lah satk. Don't look up. Lil coop, lil coop, lil coop. Heart beating, pulsating, beating. E enam koop meets wapayatam. Oh my dear, help me. Watu tsikautsa kumkina. No fear, come here. Watu hits il wah noka. I can't climb down. Hitso sa ah, I am climbing after you. Kutstita payo payo. Like a bird tumbling down. Let me be light as a feather, coyote magic. Celepitus with a yamotning. Let me be safe, relieved. Anemhipaina, winter arrived. We loop up cold air travels. Tiwahi cuts cutsisa tsitsalas. Tipi poles shivering loudly. Toss, toss, dark, lack of light. Ilakawat maka. Unepahem, bright snow seven times. Sis Yukitsa, recollecting frightful moments. Kawo inem kumits hi hi satsa. Now, my dear, climbing up tree, kutstita titwa titkinach, like from the story. Asitalah saya, asapahahalah ipna. I look up, cause it to disappear. Itpilu. Pitpilu, it's a yaya, hill wah wah. Sa, cries of owls, coyote crying. Tilkach mena ha ha lachna he. I wonder where it disappeared. Well, he sweat, qua la 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 la. Spirit flew up. Sound effects of bird flying up. Yamotnin, relieved of pain. Kekus himin. Wahota, wahota, like a wolf, I howl, I cry. Let me be a raven. Kumta, lamenting the loss. A no, a no, a no. Expression of pain. Tilapnin is a cute wapseski, mourn with cut braids. Timipnit. Pitaka, memorial, give away, koanza, what nipped honor song. Mamayats hiti yasech ka chalawasech, children are laughing and playing. Itziyaya ka tilipa hikiyayak sechanaka, coyote and fox are wandering around again. In chi leitza, I'm smiling. Elwet wachwak ki, coming out of winter, it is spring. Latito, payo, payo, he went pisa, blooming season, the birds are singing. Tayal, illa pikesa, tamnapa, lil coop, lil coop, walk iswasa, season of summer, beaming light in heart, beating, pulsating, living. Hasta Hanaka, breathing again, in pina, I arrived, in was kina, kina, in was, I am here. Here I am. And now I'd like to share or stop sharing and pass this on to Amy. And did I stop sharing? Right. I think I stopped sharing. Did I? No. Where's the, I can't find where it's at. Where did it go?
Hi. Um, yeah, I, I don't see anything shared, so you're good. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, everybody. I am Amy Cesara. I'm here in Oakland, California, uh, Filipino American, and uh, I'm the community um, fellow in the Berkeley area in Oakland. I'm gonna read, and I'm carefully checking my time. Um, that my the son that I'm writing to is around, so he might come and interrupt. Just getting ready for that, but I'm writing. I'm sharing um, letters to my son in a time of war, and it's. I just want to say the preface is that I chose to. It's a little not exactly what I was working on directly with the fellowship, but during this time, and. Um, this, the first one is, it's a series of, of letters, kind of imagining my son who's now five um, in the, like kind of imagine him reading them one day. And uh, the first ones, this is the second one. The first one is like really about Oakland and the things have been going on in Oakland. Um, and now this one is September 1, 2023. Letters to my son in a time of war. I also want to say the second one is about Gaza and about Palestine. Um, I really um, feel like it's very important right now for me with any platform that I have to continue to speak on Palestine and the genocide. Letters to my son in a time of war. September 1, 2023, dear son, at four, you sit on the dirty sidewalk, unaware or not caring that there is feces and traces of vomit and urine and any variety of bacteria and you lack any kind of stranger danger sense and socialize with anyone who gives you their eye. And you run away from me, entering elevators alone with no fear that you'll disappear. And you even laugh and say, it's okay if someone takes you away from me. That you feel so safe is testimony to being protected, your gregarious personality, and that since you were a baby, I tossed you from arm to arm, both out of a desire for collective care and necessity. I wanted to be very sure you would not become a fearful, fearful only child, fearful because of ideas I may have planted or because of a general sense of dis-ease or chaos in the world. Now it's time to fear a little bit, just that healthy kind of fear so that the world won't take you away Set so that you can live in this world. Lord knows I'll be a mama bear when the need arises, but would I? Yes, I would rather be someone who can smile and be light and not heavy with the weight of vigilance. November 18, 2023. Dear son, today there's a genocide in Gaza and you are walking with me on blocked off streets in Berkeley with a poster larger than your body that cites the thousands of children who have been killed. You chant, free, free Palestine. You want to use the microfono like the other four-year-old who uses the bullhorn with ease leading the crowd, her body grounded, feet planted. She knows how to wait and receive the response to her call. You cry that you didn't use it when you were given the chance, saying that it was muy pesado. I tell you that you'll have many more chances. On random occasions, you chant, cease fire now. And what do we want? When do we want it? Arriving at the park off university, the crowd takes over the asphalt, the stairs and the lawn like vines. And you say you want to sit on the escalera and run to the steps in front of the Christians for ceasefire banner facing out to the public, nearly press ready. You insist on sitting there front and center. Later, you ask to watch the animated short about the, about the Palestinian girl told at school that Palestine is not on the map. She goes home asking, where am I from? And her father teaches her all the beautiful things Palestine is. And this is the place, and these are the people I tell you, we are walking for when we march in these streets. I spare you the most gruesome videos, <clears throat> but there is one I return to where a child of your age is shaking from the aftershock of an airstrike. Covered in soot, eyes open wide, 
looking in confusion at his own trembling hands and feet. The first time I saw it, I thought of you, imagined you, my child, in that traumatic shock. I hold you even closer. You ask to see the video where the girl about six is mourning her father, her cry so deep, making her so much older than her years. How do you understand this? There are things I do not tell you yet that I cannot stop listening. I cannot stop looking that it feels necessary to turn towards the pain, that this is my daily grieving ritual, that there is an unease in the middle of my spine, tears ready to fall at any moment, reminding me that we are water. <clears throat> I do not tell you that this is why your, my eyes are red, why the shadows under my eyes are growing, why I have to remind myself to breathe. I do not need to tell you, my fearless child, that we cannot afford to turn away. You who faces into the present, who leads me front and center. You who always prepares me to be your mother. But how, son, do I prepare you to grow up in the belly of this beast? Thank you. I forgot I'm passing it on. Tate, passing it on. Wow, Amy, thank you so much. Tate do wash day. Chante wash day. You have no pitch you should be kushto. Jisho tate we match yapi. Walk by wash day amantahan. Hello, my friends and relatives. I greet you with a good heart. My name is Tate, and I'm a citizen of the Shine River Sioux Tribe of South Dakota, but here living on the beautiful Atam and Pipash lands in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you so much for being here with us, and ah, amazing work so far. I'm so humbled and proud to be part of this group. The poem I've been working on with, this, with the fellows uh, that I'll be reading tonight is titled, I Am Water. I am water, named and born for the air, but elementally I am two parts Lakota, one part Irish, 97% salty ante, a full drop of queer after a long Catholic drought, enough to get you wet with guilty pleasure. Thirst and salivate, storm and weep. I am a deluge of need, a flash dance of desire. I am oceanic, my surface tensioned by hope atop fathomless grief and memory. But I am a great swimmer, the breaststroke if you're naughty. I am a leviathan of jiggly bits, patient and meticulous, with stretch marks moving like currents across the horizon of my great body, where trespass is truth and forgiveness is myth. And the distance between bath and baptism is 600 degrees of my sin. I am sweat, a ceremony hot and polluted. In my songs, breath becomes blessing. Prayer hands stretched overhead become two-spirit cups catching whatever leftovers exist of a life diluted by exclusionary dogma. Smudge me, don't judge me. Drink of my tears. Dying wines resurrect as leeches. Eat of my bones. Crackers of ice choke the lake. Consume me and be purified. I am primordial soup. I pool and puddle at the heart of my ancestors in the dreams of the next seven generations. I journey back to myself in constant transformation, a cycle as promised as bloody moons. Through me, forgetting evaporates. Love erodes the pain of not enoughness, and condensed sensations release the damned drip by drop. I precipitate kin and community with my RMF, resting matriarch face, at full pressure. 
It's said the same river can't be stepped in twice, yet the waters of millions of yesteryears exist in the here now. I am everlasting. Wopila Tanka, thank you so much. And I'd like to introduce a phenomenal poet, Sa Whitney. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all for being here, those in our sacred um, square of panelists and poets that I've gotten to work with this entire semester. It's been humbling. It's been such a great experience. And I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to all of you. Um, thank you to the staff at ASU, at Berkeley, at ARC, um, and our facilitators, Beth and Natalie. Um, but yeah, I am also at ASU. Um, I am a poet and a scholar in the School of Social Transformation at ASU. Um, today, I'm going to read a couple of poems that I've workshopped with this group. Um, and my work is generally about Black dispossession and loss in the afterlife of slavery, um, but also wanting to hold on to that possibility, certainly through solidarity work, um, you know, a Black futurity, particularly Black queer futurity. Um, and with that, I'll start um, with three poems that are, that are in the five minute uh, window. Night Swim. I am returning to the old life. I swim in the pool with your dreadlocked ghost. Brown tentacles dripping, chlorinated memory. This is the first time you are seeing me with my hair naked. Afro curls become undone in handsome shipwreck. I amuse myself, call myself a floppy haired boy. Floating on my back, I am so sure that we will stay the same. The other day, two palm trees beside the pool swayed so violently, I thought they might get up and walk out on me during the dust storm, but they didn't. From this wet pool of unclouded thoughts, we still know each other. The stars have nothing to do with your eyes, so my eyes barely eat them, leave the full helping of light on the plate. You whisper wet synonyms for love into my ear. You will say it any day now. I float above the blue water without moving, a single muscle or flinching one of the 900 sinews of worry. They don't exist yet. I teach you how to somersault in the night sky lit waters. Tell you, you have to breathe out while beneath the surface. Give ourselves playful permission to turn the whole body of our lives upside down. That's how unassailably close we are to happiness. Um, and my next poem is a prose poem. And I'll share it with you now. Big Boy. After living in a town of 300 people with a glass factory sitting on the Ottaquichi River, I say, roll up the window and I roll out a hot dough of semi-liquid glass with a wooden pin, flatten it into something you could climb out of into freedom, wherever that is, or at least have a view of freedom until your release. After we gave enough information to the guard at the security checkpoint, we entered the prison grounds, galaxies away from here. Aliens have the technology to zoom in on the high definition of human suffering. That day, the last day I saw you living, dad wore his big boy to the prison, same as when he'd stand on the sidelines at our soccer games in late autumn. Dad still calls his heaviest winter jacket in the hall closet his big boy. It feels better to imagine he has the strength of more than one person wrapped around his shoulders. Years ago, we took turns climbing onto dad's back at Cape Canaveral, our very own human space shuttle. I was young enough to sit on his shoulders, whereas you took up the space of a portable light life support system on an astronaut's back. Even then we knew how special it was that our African-American father had something to do with sending shuttles into outer space, rovers to distant planets, that particular time, the Delta 230 rocket that carried the X-ray timing explorer, a satellite. The worst happens, and we backpedal into memory when we believed anything was possible and everything grew on neutral territory. 
I tried to stop the car anywhere but the prison where the Maryland Division of Corrections had occupied your name, Ray Ray, with an inmate number. Sandwiched between the Banana River and the Rio de Ice, space exploration to new worlds launches from on top of the sacred shell mounds of the ice. There isn't a place I could stand to make your death in custody dislodge itself from hard pressed geologic layers of relational violence. Somewhere, elsewhere perhaps, in a semi-distant future off world, I bet we'll both be grown enough to wear the big boy. Maybe we won't need it. And um, I'd love to end with a bit of levity um, and maybe you will see what I'm doing here um, with a little flow and in response to some of the water prompts that Natalie and Beth gave us, okay. At last, my ocean has come alive. You can't hurry ocean, you just have to wait. Things we do for ocean, I want to know what ocean is. Ocean lifted me when nothing else. I'll make ocean to you if you want me to. Ocean hangover, I don't wanna get over. All we need is ocean, crazy and ocean. Your kiss got me looking so crazy in ocean. A teenage ocean, don't, don't, don't hurt me again. Baby, I need your oceaning. Got to have all your oceaning. Computer ocean, you know I've been waiting so long. Oceaning you is easy cause you're beautiful. Ocean shack, baby, ocean shack. La 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 means I ocean you. How sweet it is to be ocean by you. Let's stay together oceaning you forever. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and I'd love to pass it back to Elan. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, everyone, also for letting me return. Um, so I'm going to, um, if I get cut off again, I'll, I'll take it as a sign that I really should be on strike. So um, I'm conflicted. Business or art, I could never con commit to that Warholian suture. Making money is art, and working is art, and good business is the best art, said Andy. I'm torn between the pressure, compulsion, the pathology, though passion is the artistic euphemism. To work, work, work. To create the next artwork, write the next chapter. To promote both, to be visible, to produce, succeed, to not be a failure, to make my mark, leave a legacy, or to go slow, not participate, to disappoint, to be a killjoy, feminist and otherwise, a curmudgeon, to cause trouble, to loosen the bolts of the machine, to not go gentle into new days, to grow old disgracefully. The art critic, Jerry Saltz, with whom I'm online meta-friends, or whatever the term is, though not to be confused with meta-friend, one word, meaning a close platonic relationship between asexuals, suggests the following, and I quote, the only way I know to enter art worlds is, is to one, work, 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 Two, stay up late every night with other artist vampires. Three, make an enemy of envy. Four, always show up. Five, work, work, work. Six, be radically vulnerable. Seven, define success as having time, not money or love. And eight, work. It sounds suspiciously like the old chestnut of poor suffering artists, driven by compulsion, sorry, passion, placing their art above everything else, including dollars and love. Stay up late? Presumably one doesn't have a job or kids. In bars? With no job, where's the drinking money from? Trust funds? One shouldn't be too hard on Jerry, who didn't follow what he tells us he knows, who gave up on being an artist and became a critic instead and who might now be only nostalgic for lost passion, for what might have been. Here's an alternative prescription. One, strike, strike, strike. Two, 
Rise whenever you feel like it. Wander without an intended destination. Take mental photographs, but leave the phone, camera, GPS at home. Avoid shooting shit with the drunken and stoned, especially artists and poets. Any great insights will be forgotten by next morning. Three, turn envy into political action towards equity. Four, go slow. Don't reply to emails, duck dive, just say no. Five, strike, strike, strike. And instead of working, read, write letters in shorthand, lecture a cat, hug a lamppost, sing to a crow, dance with a tree, rearrange a bookshelf, take a computer apart. Six, allow radical vulnerability to dissolve your compulsion to make art. Seven, there is no success when the planet burns and drowns. Eight, strike. As I said, I'm conflicted, split, ricocheting between work, 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 and strike, strike, strike. It's training, following, and failing at both lists. Jerry, I sympathize. Enduring the internal and external pressures, desires, anxieties, and ethics of both. It's also learning to live with and in contradiction, with and in discomfort. If I truly understand Marx, I would know that passion is another word for fetishizing one's alienation, another word for nothing left to lose. Thank you. And I'm going to pass it back to Beth. What a beautiful reading. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to our audience for being here with us and sharing the richness of this great group of poets. Um, so we have about 10 minutes and we're going to circle back um, to the prompt that Natalie brought um, to us. First, uh, it came to us as a prompt, where in your body do you carry water? And for tonight, we're going to, we're going to imagine where in our body do we carry poetry? And uh, Lori has been sharing with us some of the comments that the audience has shared um, in response to the poems. And people are saying, I feel it in my bones. I felt it in my spine. It quenched my thirst. Um, it feeds my body and my spirit. Uh, one poem was heartbreak and medicine. Another one said, my face is smiling. Um, someone said they smelled the poem. So uh, it seems that all of our bodies are being alighted by these poems. And so I just want to, in our last moments, to invite a popcorn style response. Please just give us one sentence. Uh, finish the sentence. Um, I feel poetry. I feel poetry in my lips pointing like, ooh, right? I'm signaling to others <laughs> that the direction they need to go in is toward those words and the message being carried therein. And all these poems are like that. I was like, all the facial expressions tonight. I'll go. I, I feel it in one specific vertebrae. I don't know which one down it is, which number it is, but it's just below my shoulder blades and it tingles. Betty, I'm going to pop on to you. All right. Um, I feel it. I feel it in my hair. I feel like it grows from me, but also it's deeply buried. And I can popcorn it to Ines. Sorry. I, f I feel it in my being, but I feel it in my, in that, in my heart, in my throat, my heart, in my throat. That's, that's what I feel. And I'll popcorn to Julian. 
I knew you were going to say my name so for some reason. <laughs> okay. And again, uh, to kind of echo what everyone's saying, y'all are amazing. <laughs> I'm always like, why am I here? Nay. <laughs> I carry poetry in my vulva, in my larynx, in my voice box, and in my voice. <laughs> and I'll popcorn it to uh, Marissa. Thanks, Julian. Um, I was trained as a concert pianist growing up, so I'll say I carry poetry in my hands and fingers um, that play language into music. And I'll popcorn it to um, Amy. Um, I think I echo like feeling it in my throat and in like the center of my belly, um, poetry. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not good at keeping track of who didn't go <laughs> help me out. I think, um, Chris, did you go? Uh, no, not yet. Um, I would say right this moment, feel poetry in the environment that I'm in. Um, when the reading was going on, there was a lot of noises that I was hearing outside the window and in parts of the house. So there's lots of kind of rumbling going on around me and it kind of matched each reading accordingly. Um, <laughs> and so that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I uh, will pass this to Christina. Thank you, such an honor to share this space with you all. Um, I feel poetry Oh, well, Christina froze right at the at the moment. Um, let's hope that Christina comes back in, and maybe we could move to um, Sa. Thank you. Um, I feel poetry um, the place where the two rib cages meet. Um, I think I like maybe the vibration of like that heat that we talk about in the clockworks um, exercise. And that place where the breath gets sort of made and cycled and renewed. Um, you can sort of feel it right there. So that's me. Let's see. Um, Angel, have you gone? Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. And yes, I am honored to be here in the presence of the magnificent, magnificent people here. And I was observing um, where I feel the poetry in it comes from a place of strength. So I thought of the strongest parts of my body, which are my legs and my arms and on the shoulders is where your powerful words um, are just transformative. So cuts the out, yeah. And I pass this on to Cody. Thank you. So in general, I feel poetry in the Ibtak in my heart. But I think tonight, what I really felt it was, um, strangely enough, in my ears. It was a lot heated up right here. And I just really liked, because um, we had a majority of readers and just hearing everyone's voice and, you know, how they pronunciate and, and recite their poems was beautiful. So I felt it a lot right there and I kind of vibrated within my head. So it was, it was awesome. And then I'll popcorn it to Eileen. Thank you. Um, I was going to say, I feel it in my hands, but I think that's just my anxiety. I'm like very like moving my hands a lot. I think I feel poetry the most in my lungs I like used to have weak lungs as a child, but I think I've really trained them and poetry has filled them and reciting poetry has filled them too. Um, I'll pass it back to Christina, I think, so you can finish. <laughs> yeah, I believe I left everyone on quite a cliffhanger. <laughs> um, I feel poetry in the center of my being from my eyes when I can feel them stinging, wanting to cry to my chest and my gut. That's where I feel poetry the most. Um, and I'll pass it off to Ines. 
I I did go. I've gone. Yeah. I think everyone has gone. Is that right? Except Natalie, Laurie, and Amanda. And you, Beth. Um, and me. I, I feel it often in my hands. I think I think with my hands. and But a lot of what I felt uh, when you all were reading is I, I tend to feel things uh, like along my collarbone line. So um, that was where I felt poetry tonight. Gracias. Oh, I'll popcorn to uh, Amanda. I just want to echo the beauty that you all shared tonight. I'm like so full and full of gratitude. And I think for me, I carry poetry beneath my skin in my arms. Like there's chills that run through it. There's heat and warmth that I feel. There's like a, a dampness that sometimes forms, but it resonates just beneath my skin. And so yeah, thank you for it tonight. I'm going to pass it over to you, Lori. Uh, thank you so much. What an honor to be here. Um, I, my hands right now are clammy with your words in some way. It's like, um, like I'm sweating, uh, like I've been walking hard and I feel your words um, just below where I swallow as if I've been taking them in. So thank you so much for sharing. And I will hand over this back over to Beth. Well, I will say that um, I really felt it in my eyes tonight and I actually feel it right, right here because sometimes I felt like crying. There were multiple times I felt like crying. I felt that come to my eyes, but also I laughed too. So I feel it just right in this space. And so I thank you for all the deep, beautiful words that we shared tonight. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, thank our audience. Come back on... February 16th and 17th, we'll be live at uh, BAM PFA. So, and also with our uh, Hawaii crew. Um, so uh, we look forward to seeing everyone then and wishing you all peace and joy and poetry. Thank you. Get you yo yo.